Good morning. It's good to have you out for Sunday school this morning. If you'll stand with me and take your hymnal, turn to number 420. 420. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither ground nor winter's chilly. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping, sowing for the master, though the house of sin our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. You may be seated this morning as we look to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we're kicking off our mission conference today and uh, on this beautiful spring day. Amen. Uh, the Easter lilies and the trees are blooming, the snow's falling, and uh, springtime in the mountains. Amen. But officially, I don't think it's spring for a couple more days, so uh, winter's trying to get the last punch in. Uh, it's good to have Brother Dale Cable with us this morning. He's going to be bringing uh, the messages uh, today uh, for us. We're looking forward to that. Good to have Brother Wesley Joseph uh, from Haiti here today, and we're so thankful. Uh, got to meet a lot of these fellows yesterday uh, at the missions dinner, and we had a good time and good fellowship. We thank the Lord for that today. Uh, but as we uh, look to the Lord in prayer this morning, i got a few uh, requests to go over. Uh, then I'm going to turn over to Brother Dale Cable. I'm not going to take a, too lot of time. Uh, but I want you to pray for my dad. Uh, Dad's up in uh, uh, Charleston Hospital this morning. Uh, we went uh, Thursday uh, for uh, normal heart. Well, I don't know if heart catheterization is normal, but we went to have a heart catheterization, uh, and the doctor found that uh, all five of the arteries going to his heart's blocked. And uh, the least one was 70%. That was his main one. And uh, the doctor said, I, I can't fix him with stents, so we need to put him in the hospital in Charleston. And so Wednesday morning, uh, this Wednesday, I'm not going to be here. Uh, Brother Russ is going to be filling in uh, for me Wednesday night. We're not going to have any Wednesday morning service uh, Wednesday as we normally would. So everything will be Wednesday evening. Uh, but Dad's going to have his surgery Wednesday morning. And I thank many of you who've called and uh, just let us know you're praying. We thank the Lord for that. So Dad's going to have to have a bypass surgery, open heart on Wednesday morning. Morning. So be praying for him uh, this week. Uh, be in prayer for our missions conference. Uh, Brother, you'll be with us uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. And uh, so we're looking forward to seeing our dear friend, Brother Yule, and uh, thank the Lord for that. Uh, one of our member, uh, Cleland, uh, Cleland, this morning, uh, Rita uh, texted us today and got a hold of us, says Cleland's in the ER right now. So let's uh, pray for Cleland this morning. Uh, Louise Rowland's not going to be able to be with us today, so uh, just pray for her. Uh, remember uh, 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 Jack uh, Humphrey this morning, uh, he's in the hospital, and uh, Mike Cart uh, in the hospital. We want to pray for them as well. 
And I also want to mention, uh, uh, we've got news this week that uh, Brother Chase Whitten, you know, Chase was with us a few Sunday nights ago visiting. Uh, he's going to be our uh, evangelist preaching our spring revival. Well, this week, I believe it was Tuesday night, uh, his house burnt to the ground. And uh, they lost about everything. And so uh, we're going to announce it today that next Sunday uh, we're going to uh, take up a special offering uh, for uh, Brother Chase. And so next Sunday back at the Welcome Center we will have special offering buckets there. Uh, so you be praying about uh, what God would have you to do uh, to give to Brother Chase and his family. They lost pretty much everything uh, except their vehicle and their pocketbook and wallet. And I believe that's about all they brought out of the house. And uh, thank God they were safe and okay. And so, uh, uh, Brother Chase, he's in good spirits. I talked to him again this week, and uh, uh, he called me this week, and he said, the revival fires are falling up here in uh, Shady Spring. And I said, Brother, that's to be taken uh, spiritually, not literally. Amen. And, and so, but thank God he's got a good heart, a good attitude. He loves the Lord, and uh, we want to help them out if we can. Uh, let's remember, uh, let me go over a few of these real quick from our prayer list on Wednesday. Uh, continue member Frank Frazier, uh, he is just uh, days, maybe hours from eternity. I uh, haven't heard. Uh, uh, they, uh, they, they moved him over here to the Maples, I believe, in Princeton, and uh, he is just hours from going home to be with the Lord. Uh, so pray for Frank Frazier. Uh, remember Homer and Sandy this morning. Uh, they're still sick. Uh, Homer's still uh, battling this cold he has. And uh, Remember Cheryl. I believe they've moved her to a rehab facility. Continue member Michael. I remember Moretta Thompson. I remember uh, Dick Powell. I believe he's home now, and so let's pray for uh, Dick and, uh, and Janie and remember Jason uh, recovering from their surgery. Uh, good to have Brother Rodney with us, and so Brother Rodney's back here with us this morning, and so uh, he's had a lot of health issues, so let's pray for Brother Rodney. Uh, remember the boys, Hunter, Preston, and Bryson. Uh, I talked to Melissa a little bit yesterday. They're doing okay, but, uh, you know, they lost their father. And so let's continue to remember them, uh, the boys here. Uh, remember uh, Dot's family. Uh, we're going to have her funeral here tomorrow. Uh, the visitation will be at noon, uh, and uh, the service is at 1 o'clock here tomorrow at Maranatha Baptist Church. So Dot Palmer, so let's uh, be praying about that. Uh, remember uh, Louise, or not, oh, yeah, Louise Rowland. Remember Lois Harmon. Continue member uh, Gene and Midkith and Kathy Tabor. Remember Shelby and Sean Graham, Phyllis Bishop. Continue member Tina Burgess. Uh, let's see. Remember Miss Betty McKinney. Keep her in your prayers. Remember Debbie Parcell. Her foot's broke. Let's remember her today. Remember Brenda Smith. I think she's uh, she's got uh, or uh, she may have pneumonia, I believe. And so pray for her and Brother Roy both. Uh, this morning, remember the. All right. Does anybody have any any others you want to add to the list this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer? Andrea. Okay. Stafford family. Okay. Oh no. So let's remember them. Jeff. Okay, Joyce Whitlow. Remember our lost people? Sharon. Okay. All right, Paula. Amen. 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 Remember Kyla and Jean Rife. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Anybody else? All right. Remember Brother Lonnie? Priscilla? Okay. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Be back in the safe. We'll, we'll remember Kathleen this morning. All right, anybody else? Unspoken, anybody else unspoken this morning? God knows our needs. And again, remember our country, remember our church, our lost people, Alan?
Mm. Well, wow. Remember the Mayberry family. And also continue to remember Brother Connie Shrewsbury, too. All right. Debbie, did you have some? Okay, kid family. All right, well, let's look to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to turn it over to Brother Dale here just in a moment, and let's ask God to help us today on this beautiful day the Lord has given us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today for the blessings of God. We thank you for the goodness of God. We thank you for the sweet Holy Spirit that lives and abides in our heart. Lord, we thank you for your salvation that you give full and free. And Lord, we're thankful, Lord, this week that, uh, Lord, as our mission conference kicks off today, uh, Lord, uh, we are uh, getting our hearts and minds focused, Lord, on uh, where your heart and mind is focused. And Lord, you said that we're to have the mind of Christ Jesus. And we know uh, that according to the word of God and the scriptures teaches us that the mind of Christ is the lost and dying souls of men. Lord, from eternity past to eternity future, your mind has been on the lost. And Lord, and you came to redeem us. And we have the message of the gospel uh, to preach to a lost and dying world how that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. And Lord, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But Lord, we're thankful uh, this week that our uh, hearts are being encouraged in missions. Lord, we're thankful for the missionaries that are here. Uh, we're thankful for the good mission dinner we had last night. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from Brother Dale Cable today. And uh, Lord, uh, preaching the word of God, may our hearts be open and receptive. And it's good to have Brother Joseph here. And uh, Lord, all of the missionaries that we'll hear from this week. And Lord, we're looking forward to what you're going to do. So Lord, we need your help today. <clears throat> Lord, we need your strength. Father, I pray that... Lord, as we here in Princeton, West Virginia, uh, Lord, this is our Jerusalem. This is our place to, to minister, Lord. I pray that, uh, Lord, you would bless our endeavors here as we go on visitation and soul winning and, uh, Lord, our bus ministry and, Lord, all the uh, different avenues that we have here to reach, uh, Lord, uh, our community. But, Lord, help us, uh, Lord, to not uh, only remember our Jerusalem but the uttermost parts of the earth, and that's what missions is all about. So, God, help us today. And, uh, Lord, we pray for these that are sick and in need. Lord, I ask you to help my dad this morning. And, uh, Lord, as he's up there in the hospital Wait and surgery, Lord, be with Mom and uh, Jenny as they'll be traveling up this afternoon after church today. Uh, Lord, that you'll give them safety. Lord, be with my brothers; they go back and forth. Lord, we just pray that your hand to be upon them this week. And uh, Lord, just uh, just ask you to help, Lord. And uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Cleveland that's in the hospital this morning in the ER. We pray for him and Rita. God, you'll bless them. Uh, Lord, I pray for Brother Chase Witten this morning and his family. And we're so thankful that uh, Lord that they were not harmed, that they were safe, and were able to get out of the home. But God, we pray that uh, Lord that you'll supply their need, Lord, that they have. And, Lord, I pray that uh, we as a church here will be able to give them a good offering to help them out in that endeavor. Lord, we pray for Louise Rowland that's sick this morning and for Jack Humphrey and Mike Cart. Uh, Lord, for Susan French. And, Lord, we pray for the Stafford family and the loss of their loved one. And, uh, Lord, this uh, family at Andrea School that lost uh, this uh, uh, dad that was killed. Father, we pray for that dear family this morning. And, uh, Lord, I ask you to be with Brother Connie Shrewsbury today that you'd help him and help Brother Alvin and uh, his brother and sister, Lord, as they take care of him. Lord, we ask you to help them. Pray for the Mayberry family, this young man uh, that, Lord, uh, went out into eternity. Father, I pray for their family, God, that you'd help them today. Uh, Lord, I pray for a joy Whitlow in hospice this morning and the Wynn family uh, that lost a loved one. Lord, we uh, thankful for the report for Kyla today that's here and thank you Lord that you've been touching her and healing her this morning and continue to work on her life and Lord I pray for Gene Reif, continue to help him today and uh, Lord for Brother Lonnie that's here that's in a lot of pain this morning we ask you to just bless him and Lord as he's faithful to come and Lord help and uh, visit and pray and uh, Lord he, he does all that he can but we'll give him strength this morning and help uh, Lord we pray for Kathleen today uh, on this mission trip to Peru, God, we pray for your hand of provision and protection uh, to be upon her. Uh, many unspoken requests that were signified this morning. And so, God, we pray that, uh, Lord, that you'll meet each one according to your divine will. Uh, Lord, I think of Frank Frazier laying in the hospital this morning on eternity's door. God, I pray that you would help him, give him grace. Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, for uh, his children, Matthew and Adrian, God, that they would get back to the Lord where they need to be. And, Father, uh, Lord, we just ask you to help them, Lord, in this family today. Lord, I pray for Homer and Sandy, Lord, that you'll help them this morning as Homer's still sick. And, uh, Lord, we pray for their situation there with Michael, God, that you'd help Michael today. And, Lord, I pray for Cheryl, uh, God, that you'd help her up there in Baltimore in the rehab center. Lord, we pray for Maretta Thompson and uh, Lord you continue to help Moretta pray for Richard Powell as he uh, uh, continues to recover from his surgery and Jason there and uh, we ask you to help them this morning 
I pray for Roy and Brenda Smith that's been sick. God, as you'd help them today. And uh, Lord, for Dot's family that'll be here tomorrow. God, I pray that, uh, Lord, that you'll uh, give me the words to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, uh, if there's those there that's not saved, uh, Lord, that they would uh, come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus tomorrow. And so, Lord, just help us with that. Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, for the many other requests we have mentioned. Lord, there's so many. And uh, Lord, we want to, uh, you know each one, and we lift these up to you every week. And we pray that, God, that you would bless and help. Uh, and Lord, we'll get back to this Wednesday, Lord, in our uh, regular uh, prayer uh, services, Lord. So we ask you to, Lord, just help us today. And Lord, may our hearts and minds be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ and missions this week. So dear Holy Spirit, you come and meet with us. It's just a meeting unless you show up. So God, you do your work and have your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Brother Dale, you come on and uh, wherever the Lord leads you this morning. Hold it down towards green, brother. Good to go. God Thank bless you. you. Amen. Amen. Well, it's a blessing to be here, be with you. I'm excited. I've uh, many times been here, saw the Lord move in. Don't ever take that for granted. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was thinking as I dropped my uh, one of our men off, Ashworth, this morning. And uh, I hadn't even thought about that verse in a long time. The Word of God's not bound. We feel unqualified a lot of times. Amen? I, I, I'm supposed to know the Spanish language. I'm supposed to be bilingual. And uh, I feel so in, inadequate. But I found out a long time ago, the Word of God's not bound. Amen? I found out a long time ago, you do your part. He'll do his. Amen. He's not dependent on you. It's dependent on him. Yes. If we depend on him, it'll be all right. Yes. It'll reach where it needs to be reached. It'll not return void. We got a brother here from Haiti, Brother Wesley Joseph. He'll be right before the preaching hour and uh, going to give his testimony. We're looking forward to that. Uh, and this morning, I want to do something that I, I don't think I've talked much about, the Amazon. Now, you know, I work in Cuba, worked in Cuba for many years, 20, some 22 years. But uh, since I'm bilingual, I go into uh, some of these other countries. I go into Amazon. I also go into Panama and other places. But uh, we've been in the uh, Amazon four times. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think... I know down here at the guest house, I saw a picture there of Brother Euler Falco. And y'all, y'all remember him? And so he was my first contact there. And I'm going to tell you a story this morning. Now, we're hoping to get some of this. And this is just raw footage, understand. It's not a formal presentation, but it just show you the Amazon. But I, I, I'm going to tell you a story of Falco. I met him probably about the same time you met him. He was on his way. And uh, I just started going into Cuba. And uh, just a few years later, I was together with him again. I mean, it wasn't two or three years. He gets up and he tells his story, tells his up, he gives an update. He's, on, he's, a, he's a Brazilian. He lived in Florida. God dealt with him to go back. He went back. And uh, uh, he, he gets up and gets his, gives his update. And so I, was, I listened to it, and it was just unbelievable. Well, I was to give my update on Cuba. And I was so worked up by the time he got through, I had to go talk to him before I went up there. <laughs> I said, now, I, don't, I, 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 misunderstood, I misunderstood you. I said, when I met you, I thought you was on your way to Brazil. I didn't realize you'd already been there. Because in my mind, I thought there's no way he could have done what he did in that short amount of time. He said, no, he said, I was on my way then. I said, you, I was worked up in. I couldn't even give my presentation on Cuba. And so long story short, I ended up going. Now, they speak, they speak Portuguese. They speak Portuguese. And like I say, he's Brazilian. And, uh, but where he's at, it's where three countries meet. And we land in Colombia, Leticia, Colombia. And he works in Tabatinga, which is a twin city between the two countries. You got Leticia and Tabatinga. And I mean, there's no guards and there's no, you know, they just freely go back from one, one city to the other. The only way you can get in there is with a plane or with a boat. 
There ain't no highways, no highways. Now, in the city, yeah, in the city proper. But uh, they, I guess over the years, they've imported them in there. And you're in the jungle. And uh, it's just unreal. You go out here and see what's going on out here. That there's another place in the world that they don't know anything about what's going on out right there out here. All this cold and this wind and this snow. I picked up two Filipinos one time and they hadn't ever seen it. And it was a missions conference and I picked them up at the motel and they didn't want to go out there in it. They said, uh, will it hurt us? <laughs> Amen. But uh, it's hard for us to imagine. But the, a, year, a year in the Amazon, it's hot, it's humid. And he tells the story, and I'm going to tell you the story of him going. By the way, pray for him. He's at, he's at death's door as well. He's back home. He, he's an old soldier, soldier of the cross. But uh, he goes down. He's, he's, he's right on the main avenue there, not a street, an avenue. And he rents him a building. No, he rents him is, is a building. Beside the building, which was a disc, discotheque, was another little small building. And so he just started, he wanted to start a work, and he asked him if he could rent that one. It's the same propriety or same ownership. And uh, they said he could. And so he went out and he invited, and he got up, bought him some chairs, some of them little white plastic chairs. And on Sunday, it was standing room only. So uh, he goes back out the next week. He goes, buys a bunch more of those chairs and, and, and have, have them ready. And that Sunday morning, standing room only. There wasn't enough chairs. He said, I went back the next week. He said, I bought me some more. And he said, I invited and kept inviting. And he said, the next Sunday, he said, it standing room only. And by that time, the owner, uh, had uh, the discotheque was there, and it was in full swing and the music and all of that. And uh, they started praying because it was really interrupting their services. And so... And then also they found out about what's going on with that church there, and they didn't like it, and they was passing out all kinds of stuff to the kids. And so they started praying, Lord, do something about that disco tech. And so uh, wasn't, wasn't two weeks, the owner come back to him, said, uh, would you be interested in buying that building? Yeah. Now, it's, 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 a, it's almost the size of this. It's got cathedral ceilings just like this. It looked like it was built to be a church. It was. <laughs> Amen. The Lord knew one day this is going to happen. And uh, it's about uh, probably two-thirds the size of this church. And uh, he said, well, there's no way I can afford that. And, you know, he was running out of room, and the owner knew he could use it. He said, there's no way. He said, well, I'm going to sell it. He said, well, how much are you, do you want it for? He said, $43,000. Now, you have to keep in mind, it's road frontage right there on the avenue, two down this way and that, two going that way. And... Uh, he said, uh, he said, well, he said, I'll see. And he, he wrote back where he, uh, he's out in Florida and told his home church that uh, there, the, it is available. So they had a special Sunday for him. And they had a Sunday where they raised money and they was going to try to raise money to go toward that. And uh, guess how much money come in? 43000 right. Amen. The church and two individuals, two individuals outside the church helped and gave toward it. And without knowing how much, was, and it all came in and went total up, they bought that building. And uh, that's what he told. And so long story short, I ended up, I went down there, and I don't know if it was 08, 09, first trip, and the uh, place was packed. I mean, it was, they had an anniversary service. There's it it four or 500 people there. They had rode, some of them had rode, ridden banana boat four, let's see, six hours one way to get there to be in that be in that meeting and uh, we had a time I mean we just it was great and uh, they was living in a little old home a little old house and uh, he's using a lot of his money to raise support and support preacher boys and I said I said you can't do that I said you gotta you gotta live we you know these churches back home they're supporting you you need to you gotta live and take care of your wife I said I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna try to help and raise money and uh, get some support for these men. Well, in, over the years, we've got Nixon in, Nixon Kubahi, Kubiahi, I don't know if y'all know him. We've got uh, Marcus Velas, he's been in, and uh, ended up, we've got, we had four, I think, all total counting oiler. I made four trips, and so it's been a blessing. Been a, we got now 
you know, it's hard to tell right now. There's been some things going on. We probably got about 15 works up and down that river, about 70, 70 miles. That don't sound like a long, a long distance, but that's a long distance on water. I've re- I've ridden that Amazon. That's a big river. There's some places in that river when it's the main body, you know, it splits off a little ways and it comes back. If it's the main body, you can't see across it from one side to the other. And uh, it's just a blessing. Can Do y'all have any of that footage up and going? Is it possible? No. And it, understand, this is not a formal presentation. This is just me and down there. And you may have to take the audio off of it. If you know how Apple, Apple phones do, they make a little video of the pictures you've taken. That's what it is. Just go ahead and start it and I'll, you know, it's just raw footage. You may have to kill some of these lights. Now we, we, you'll see Brother Scotty Drake, his wife. You'll see Dale Bowes and uh, the, the daughter, Cindy. Also Brother Jonathan Calmer. He is in on one of these trips. They're actually, this is what we, you hear of the banana boat. That's a banana boat. We bought two or three of those over the years for these me, our men. They're actually going down a tributary here. I actually got down in there and got stuck, and the man had to jump out in the water to push it on. They saw an anaconda in the water. <laughs> this is a little village. That house, I want you to look, it, it only has about two, two sides to it, not even real, real good. This is just a village, one of the villages where they're at. That's the school. We walked up and down. We'd ride, ride the river and then and, and get out and walk up and down in villages. We've actually got to work there. But you see, you see how, they, how they live. That's a church. That's a, one of them lizards. <laughs> now that's one of the buildings. There's about four or five of those buildings that's been built since we started there. Churches. That's Brother Jonathan. Some of y'all know him. He pastors up here at Lewisburg. Some of his family. There's Brother Gary Hollingsworth, son-in-law there. He went with me. That's Marcus. He's one of the men, one of our was one of our men. Now I'll show the other one if you would. I, I, like I say, I, uh, this is just raw footage and. Uh, we tried to work it out, and I appreciate y'all working with me this morning on this. I've got an Apple Mac Pro, and it's always a different principle with computers. This is the second one. This is just where we stayed on up the river. I'd only been up there one time. It's so far up there. See, you ride one of those taxi shuttle boats up the river. That's the only means of transportation. And if you go up, you've got to come back on that same boat, or you've got to spend a night up there somewhere. You don't want to be caught out there. <laughs> That's Brother Oiler there. And we come through this town passing out tracks, and they were just sitting. Do you see them? They're sitting along in the plaza there reading those tracks. Look at them. He actually won this fella to the Lord. And he's a weeping. He got saved right there. There's the river. That's Brother Oiler. Passing out tracks. That's that's a work that they had. Wanting to start a work right there. Even down there, you got digital TV. Look at that snake hanging down. <laughs> look at that goose. She's look at she's plucking it. We go off down in there and pass out tracks, and saw the church come back. She's still plucking it right there. I'll show you in just a minute. Wait just a minute. At the very end of this, I want you to see this. But there's the church, Baptist church, the, the rainbow of Noah. That's what it said. That's one of the churches. Right there, she got it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I had some more, but we just wasn't able to incorporate everything. You can give me the lights again. But, you know, that'll give you an idea, give you a pretty good idea. It was so hot there. That uh, 
we we take our men out to eat, and uh, you know we want to take them out to eat, but it was so hot I didn't want to eat. All I want to do was drink. I mean, it is. If you're not used to the heat, you you suffer about like this brother here suffering today. He's not used to the winter, <laughs> all this snow, amen. And uh, I mean, it was it, it is hot. But uh, oh, uh, we're there in Leticia, we're there in the Tabatinga, the Portuguese church. And then we go down the river, down Colombia, and you go across the river, and you got uh, Santa Rita. And that's Peru. So potentially, we got we're reaching three countries right there with the men that we got. You go down the river, and down the river about uh, you know probably about forty miles is a little tourist uh, city and a little town, and uh, they they have they had a work there, it wasn't one of ours, and but there was a man going there. Or he was pastor in the church. He come in with some problems because he was from Peru and he got into immigration problems with the legalities and had to leave. He didn't tell anybody. And so he had a church. It's a, it's a mortar, mortared building and a little pastorium right along the side of it and had a lot. And he left and they stole that building. Not the church because it's out of mortar. They stole everything they could off that little, little building where the pastor lived. Well, the, the town offered us, if you'll build another little uh, house for the pastor to live in, we'll deed you the property to that church. And this is in a tourist town right there on the, on the river. And so we did. We came back, and there's two or three churches helped us and individuals, and we built that brother a house. And they deeded us the property. So we're there. And uh, the, the mayor of the city where I land and Leticia, which is an international airport, he's the mayor, he got saved. And over the years, the Lord called him to preach, and I met him the last trip I was there, was there and uh, he asked me, he said, we're going to have an ordination service. Would you help in ordination? And I did. His name's Harold. And so uh, we put him up there, set him up there and built him a house, built him a building. He's probably uh, 55, 58. And so he's up there, and uh, he's, got a, he's got a work going. And so there's, there's, there's where he's at. We lost one of our men. And then, of course, Oilers, you know, he's, he's at death's door and he's back home. Pray for him. We've got another guy. We went on up there to uh, on up the river. And uh, we'd never been there but just last time. And there's a brother up there who's got two churches and we want to bring him in. His name's Sean. I'd like to. I'd like to go back in May. I, I, my passport. It, it's, I've got it sent off to get get a new passport, and I can't book a trip till I get my passport. But I'd like to go in May and uh, see what's going on, and maybe take it. Uh, maybe we can bring Sean in and raise his support. I'm gonna tell you some stories. You tell me when it's time. Fifteen till something like that. All right. I'm gonna tell you two or three stories about just missionary stories of men that we know down there. They told, and, and one of them I sat in there and I was, was sitting in there in the lobby where we stayed and there's a big, there's a big scar on his ankle and it looked just like a cigarette burn. And I said to him, I said, what happened? He said, well, he, he's a missionary. He said, we went up the river. He said, we got up there and I was uh, uh, reaching the people. And he said, I came back, and I, he said, late at night, and I was at home, and I, he said, I, my ankle was hurting. I looked down, and he said, they was a, it was swollen. It was starting to hurt real bad. And, uh, man, there's some wild stuff there, I'm telling you. Uh, he said, I went to my neighbor who was from India. He said, he's not a doctor, but he's knowledgeable. And he showed it to him, said, what do you think? He said, I think I can fix it. He said, I think I can take care of that. I think I know what it is. He said, but it's going to hurt. He said, well, do whatever you got to do. It was a cigarette burn, but it wasn't a cigarette. It was a cigar. He lit a cigar and put it down there in that burn, and there was a big worm crawled out. It killed it. It killed the, it, you know, it killed the worm. That's what was going on. He'd been bitten. We seen that in Bolivia. I, I was a missionary in Bolivia, South America, and uh, they had what they called banchugas, and it was what they call a sleeping disease, and they. They land uh, during the night. If you have a straw roof, they'll, they'll uh, build nest up in that straw roof. During the night, they fall down on the person that's asleep and bite them. It, and, and, and in the course of time, it'll go to their heart. And it'll actually be a worm, and it'll 
they'll have to be on some kind of medicine the rest of their life or they'll die. Now, these are stuff you, you, you just, you know, you never know when, you, when, you, when these men come in what they're facing. This same brother, he went up the river, on a, and that was a banana boat. They go up the river trying to reach the people, and here is the, here's the, uh, the, what they're able to do if they can get up in the, and this is the Colombian side, if they can get up there and reach the chief of that village, whatever village they're in, if they reach the chief and they get him saved and he gives them the invitation, then they can go up there and start a church. So that's what they do, try to reach the, 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 king, the chief. Well, he was way up there and uh, got up there and hit a log that wasn't paying attention with a banana boat and hit a log. And it busted aside side in a banana boat. He said it, you know, of course, started, started to sink and had to go off on the side. He said, I was so far up there, he said, I knew I was in trouble. I mean, they're savages. Where they're at, where we're at, within two hours, and that don't, that's, not, that's not far up the river by boat. There's headhunters. And uh, he said he, they had to get that boat fixed because they were so far up there that if they didn't get that boat fixed when night time come, they were in trouble. He said they didn't have anything, had a hole in the boat and couldn't get back. And said they looked around and they had some uh, duct tape. They patched the hole and it uh, got the propeller. What do you call it? The, yeah, the prop, it, uh, the pin. Jerk, how do you call that? What do you call that? When it, it sheared it, sheared the pin. Well, he, he had a piece of uh, metal laying on the bottom, rhubarb. What do you call it? Rebar. My mind ain't like it used to be. I ain't always been this way, but I am 67 years old. There's a piece of rebarb down there, and all he had was a pin knife. Now, you know, he's a, like a half inch of three eighths. And he said, Well, number one, they tried the, the wood from there. It's called ironwood. It's very hard. And they carved it down and tried to use it for a pen to get that propeller. And he cranked it up and it sheared it just like that. So he took that piece of rebar, took a pen knife, and it took him hours, took him four and a half hours, and, and, and carved that metal down to a shearing pen. And he said it was getting dark. He said they cranked that thing up and took it out of there. Is another story. They had been there for several years, was coming home. If you go down there, it's, it's four flights for me. It's three connectors. And most of the time, you're, you're, you, when you've got more than two connecting flights, your suitcase is not going to make it. They told me that, and it didn't. And uh, I've actually, when I landed one place, they had a person from the airport meet me at, at the, when I walked off to take me to the next, because they knew I wasn't going to make it to the next flight. But uh, they got to Bogota, and he's got four kids, and they were in the motel, and the little, one of the little ones was crying. And they thought he was just, you know, just ill because of traveling. He said they started taking his clothes off to put pajamas on, and something had bit its leg down at the bottom, and they had to rush to the hospital. I mean, they couldn't even take the clothes off. They had to cut it with scissors. It had swelled up so, so big. And the doctor, when he saw it, he knew what it was. He said, I'm going to be honest with you. He said... Uh, he, he, he will die unless I cut his, uh, amputate him. I'll have to amputate his leg. And in the morning, we will. And the doctor left. It was up in the night. But in the next morning, the doctor came back, back in ready to, to, to amputate. When he, looked, when he looked at the little boy and he looked down at the leg, he said, I don't understand this. He said, I've never seen this happen. He said, I don't think I'm going to. No, we're not going to have to. He told his story, that missionary, he said, we got home. He said, two weeks later, he had a church in Texas write him. and said, what happened two weeks ago? He said, we come under a burden for you. And our whole, family, our whole church family became so burdened for you that we had a 24-hour prayer vigil praying for you. Oh, God. Amen. You know what? We're in a great business. We're, you know what? Saving souls. Greatest business in the world. I was thinking about some of these that are in your church that's standing at death's door. I guarantee you there's not a one in here of, these, of all these people 
that they're not somebody that you know real close or your family, there's somebody standing at, de at death's door. And, you know, we think about a candle. I was thinking as the pastor was talking about it, you've watched those candles, and some of them are burnt down pretty low. They don't like much. They're about to burn out. And if we only knew it, a lot of us were that close. And we might even be closer than the ones we prayed for a while ago. You never know. I'm glad we're in the greatest business in the world trying to reach souls Amen. that might get saved. You know, all that's going on right now with March Madness, you know what? what we're, what's going on in this church and churches like this this morning trying to reach souls is far greater reward Amen. than any of that. Amen. There's a verse, and we gotta, we gotta keep it in perspective. There's a verse that's always plagued me especially here in America with materialism. You hear that word by missionaries a lot and you don't realize it, but you go spend time on the field and you come back and you realize how materialistic our country is. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Luke, that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Just keep that in mind this week. These men are reaching souls and they're just like soldiers on the field. It's like when Vietnam or D-Day in Normandy, we've seen in our men out and they're there where the, where the battle, where they're in harm's way and we need to pray for them and, and back them up and help them in any way we can and take care of them because they're doing God's work. God will use you and God will bless you on account of it. It's amazing how God's worked this thing out, amen, how we can be a part of what men do on fields where we'll never be able to go you don't have the health to go. You don't know the language. Amen. And uh, they live on a fraction of the cost that we could live on. And God has so worked it out to where we can be a part with what they're doing. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing that we can be do what we do. I'm telling you, I'm excited about what God's doing. Let's all pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this morning. Thank you, God, for this church. It's been so, uh, Lord, instrumental in the years with help ministries and God, we've got, uh, had the opportunity of, uh, Lord, being here and knowing these people, Lord, for 20 years. God, I thank you for them. Thank you, God, for what they stand for. Lord, what they attempt and what they do. I pray that you'd be with us this week. I pray you'd touch every national. Lord, it mounts this uh, pulpit and Lord gives their burden. I pray that you'd use them. I pray that you bit their families back home. God, have your way. God, touch and uh, give us a special time this week. Lord, help us to have our priorities in the area that it needs to be in. Lord, in the little time that we've got left on earth, I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. We take for granted a lot, don't we? Amen. We need to be praying for these men. We need to be supporting them. That's why we believe in missions work. We've always done that here. We're going to keep doing that. Uh, till the Lord comes back. Well, we're going to be dismissed right now, and uh, we'll join back in here at 11 o'clock. Uh, me and we're going to go over here to the prayer room, the conference room, and pray. Ladies will be in the choir room. Uh, if y'all want to pray with us this morning, you're welcome to do that. And uh, then we're looking forward to hearing from the Word of God at the 11 o'clock hour. You're dismissed.